you don't need a CNC or UV printer to make this, and most people won't guess it wasn't made in a factory. In this video, a new method to get a super sleek look on your front panels, with crisp details and colors, water resistant and even coffee proof. And yes, I show you how they hold up under stress. No special tools, no fancy gear, just cheap, easy and fast. So let's turn that blank panel into something stunning. As usual, the first step is preparing your design. I'm using Inkscape, but any vector software you like will do the trick. Just make sure it can set measurements in millimeters. We are not printing t-shirts here. Keep in mind your panel size, drill holes and labeling. It all starts here. Add text, logos, symbols, anything you want to appear on the final panel. For more details on how to design your panel, watch the previous video I made on this topic. You will find the link in the description. Once your design is ready, it's time to print it. Just use a regular inkjet or laser printer. If your panel is too big for standard paper, a local copy shop can print it for you. Make sure you print at 100% scale, no fit for page or automatic resizing, or your holes won't line up. Also, don't make this mistake, keep in mind to have the shape that covers the back panel without strokes. The printed paper needs to be properly treated, so we move into the spraying department. You need a transparent satin finish acrylic spray varnish and one opaque white acrylic spray paint. And unlike me, when you do this, uh, use a clean piece of cardboard, a spray paint, uh, go through the paper and <laughs> melt it to the layer of color. But now it's sticking. <laughs> In fact, the varnish seeps into the paper's pores, making it semi transparent. Uh, and to prevent the aluminum from showing through, spray the back side of paper with a layer of opaque white paint. While the paint dries, let's prepare the panel substrate. In this demonstration, I'm using a 30 mm wide aluminum flat bar cut to a length of 100 mm. Aluminum is the preferred material, it's lightweight and easy to work with. After cutting the piece from the stock, double check the dimensions against your printed design. Carefully cut out the design following the panel edges using a straight ruler for clean lines. Now secure the aluminum substrate to a stable surface. You can use a bit of double sided adhesive to hold it in place. Here I fix it onto the piece of wood which I clamped to the bench. Before moving on, clean the aluminum with acetone to degrease it. Nitro thinner works too if that's what you have at hand. It's glue time! You can use a wide range of adhesives, but for best results I recommend two-part glues or resins because they tend to harden more rigidly. Though be mindful of the solvents used in your glue, some can react badly with the primer paint on the back of the paper. For example, acrylic resins can sometimes dissolve acrylic paint. You can also use two-part polyurethanic white paint as an adhesive, since it's essentially a resin. Anyway, when in doubt, do a test first. Now, the cutout design is ready to be attached to the substrate. Make sure it's properly aligned with the edges. Start pressing from the center and work your way out toward the edges. This helps avoid eye bubbles. Don't force the paper into place or it may stretch. This is especially important with thinner paper. And speaking of paper, while standard inkjet paper is typically 80 gram per square meter, you might want to go thinner for this project. A 55 gram per square meter paper works better as it creates a thinner layer, which reduces the risk of exfoliation at the edges. As an alternative, you can use self adhesive paper. But uh, when you spray with the varnish, uh, it becomes a little bit transparent, as you can see here. And respect from here, here it has been not sprayed, and here it has been sprayed. And uh, it is a little bit less rigid, the glue is a little bit less rigid, so yeah. And you can even glue onion skin paper like this. And of course, it, it is transparent, uh, so you will see through the aluminum. Yeah. 
it works pretty well. Yeah, it's good for drilling and uh, it, it creates a very little burr and um, the only drawback is that it does not adhere very well, it doesn't bond very well with the glue for some reason. Uh, I have to say that this is a fast uh, dry, fast setting glue. Uh, it is okay for making a video because it is fast, but uh, it takes uh, some days to, to cure completely and be, to become really hard. So at the beginning it is a little bit sticky and uh, and soft uh, so it is so it is easier to peel off. Uh, and talking about polyester self-adhesive uh, sheet, uh, it is uh, nice. It can be printed from a print shop, but uh, yeah, you know, the feeling is that of uh, like a bumper sticker. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, this glue sets fast but remains a bit soft, at least for some days. So I'm not sure if it was because I didn't spread it very well or just because the glue was still soft, but when I tested the adhesion at the corners, it gave way slightly, causing a tiny bit of detachment. However, on the other corners, I found it impossible to detach it using my nails. Before drilling the holes, let's give the panel one more pass with the spray varnish. This is the second of the three passes. Once that's dry, you can drill directly into the almost finished panel. Just be careful not to stain the surface with oil or cutting fluids. And when drilling larger holes, here's a handy trick I learned. That red thing is a small piece of cloth which helps preventing vibrations, so we get a smoother cut. Also, make sure to keep the drill bit clean because bit up swarf can scratch your pristine new panel. For big holes, using an intermediate protective sheet is a must, but for small holes like these, it can be done directly. Just take your time with a file and a bit of patience. Drilling will leave small paper burrs around the holes, kind of like when you drill into wood thinner paper with left fewer burrs. Anyway, they are easy to clean up. Just press the burrs toward the hole with your nail and then trim the excess with a sharp knife. When filing, just do the same and use the file to get them away. As you can see, the result already looks pretty nice. Now give it a final pass of spray varnish to seal the edges, especially around the holes. Okay, so look at these little bubbles. I sneezed while spraying. <laughs> now let's put this sample through a little stress test. You can rub it with your fingers or even a screwdriver and uh, it won't get significantly damaged. As mentioned earlier, the corners are the weakest point, especially when using a softer glue. Here I managed to peel one up, though I have to say it did take a fair bit of effort. Also worth noting, the spray varnish isn't resistant to solvents. To make it solvent proof, you can apply a coat of liquid transparent epoxy. This can be used for both gluing and coating. And if you move carefully, the coat can be applied immediately after gluing the paper. For best results, apply it with a roller to get an even, satin, super professional look. Use a good spongy roller, not like this one. <laughs> you can also experiment other techniques like I'm doing here. Also, in this case, I used thin paper which bonds really well forming a single compact coat. And this is the version with uh, thin paper and uh, epoxy resin both on bottom and top side, liquid epoxy resin. And uh, as you can see, this uh, uh, bumpy, uh, these lumps uh, of glossy resin happens because there is too much resin. And uh, this is the difference between the, the satin surface and uh, this uh, glossy surface. The resin is not completely cured because it would take um, 
more time, if not much time. So the resin is still a little bit soft, so it is possible to peel off the the paper. Unfortunately, it takes a longer time and it would take too much time to complete the video. So this is not complete test. And because the resin is not yet completely cured, it is not so hard. I can dent it here with a nail and uh, but here the adhesion is good so uh, when uh, this becomes hard it would be really difficult to remove this uh, with the nail so let's see what happens when we drill on it cuts very well, there is a little burr. Let's try to make a bigger hole. Right. Yeah, there's a little bit of burrs, less than the, pa the thicker paper. Even without the extra epoxy coating, the panel is already waterproof. It can handle immersion up to 5 minutes at room temperature. And here it is with its knobs and control switches in place. Super cool! and it looks really high-hand. Doesn't it look like uh, it just came off a production line, right? If you enjoyed this build, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more, consider to support giving a super thanks. Because, you know, making videos is expensive and time-consuming. Also, check the description for the link to the previous tutorial I mentioned earlier or visit my website at accidentalscience.com I'm building something new and uh, you could be the first to know. Subscribe to my newsletter for early updates and special access as things unfold. On my website, uh, click stay up to date, enter your email and uh, an optional password and you are in. It's free and you can unsubscribe anytime. For now, that's all folks. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye. <laughs>